Cheers. Cheers. Tequila, lime, soda. Easy. Perfect. Baccarat glasses. <laughs> Ooh. I might have paid it. Those were a gift. I wouldn't buy $220 Are these glasses. $220? Yeah. Whew. You know me. You know me and my glassware. <laughs> Very into it. Um, all right. Welcome to Drink with James. <laughs> Episode, I don't know, because Tim's not here. But it is <laughs> Drink With James Cribs Edition. We're in my house. I didn't feel like going to the office. We got Michelle from Michelle Takes Aim here. I've been trying to get take her on. Take Aim. The, take Aim, sorry. Um, I do take Aim. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get her on the show for about a year and a half now, I think. Yeah. We... We went to Palm Springs together last mm. summer, and we drove back. Uh, we did the drive from Palm Springs to LA, and we talked a bit about your Instagram, and you said some things that stuck with me for, well, since then, and blew my mind, and it's been really interesting mm. to see your growth. It's been really interesting to kind of see how you've reacted to some of the changes in Instagram. You guys are about to get some fucking fire rain down on you, <laughs> um, so you're welcome. It's Sunday. We're here anyway. Michelle works every day. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank so you I for think, having me. Yeah, I think the first thing is just kind of um, how you, like, how the, how'd you get into this? Uh, you know, vaguely. I, I mean, it, I know it's been five years, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a long story. Yeah. But just w what made you start the Instagram? Yeah. Um, you know, five years ago, I was kind of dabbling in the fashion industry. I was working in wholesale, I was making jewelry, uh, running a small business, and I came to a point in my life where I had to kind of, you know, make a decision of what I really wanted to do moving forward. I'm a, I'm a college dropout, which is kind of a weird thing to okay. say, but I never finished college. Um, Aaron's raising his, Aaron is, is Aaron's excited. guest he's directing sports here. He's, he's also a college <laughs> dropout. And we've got three or four college dropouts in yeah. four card as well. Yeah. So you're in, you're in great Honestly, company. Honestly, like, I am not the type of person to drop out of college, but I fell into um, kind of like a career path before I finished college, so I just ran with it. And I learned from experience and just like, you know, getting involved in what I wanted to do. So um, I was at a point in my life where I was moving on from the wholesale design job that I had and um, decided, it was at this point, I'd been following a few bloggers for like a couple of months and was so inspired by this world of like following someone and feeling like I knew them and um, also loving fashion. It was just like an exciting idea for me to do something and I felt I could, but at that point, um, you know, I'd been to school for like pre-med and physics, which I wouldn't say was necessarily my parents' choice for me, but they were like, you're smart, you know math and science, you should do something like that. So I went and interned at a hospital, it just wasn't a right fit for me. And then I fell into kind of like this wholesale sales um, managing and while I felt like those were things that I did well and thrived in, um, I'd really just never figured out what was my passion. So um, while I was, ex I was in this place of figuring out what I wanted to do with my future, I realized that following these bloggers was something that was really exciting to me. Um, so that's why I called my blog Take Aim, because for me, I was scared to do it. Mm -hmm. and like. You know, you worry about failing, you worry about what other people will think of you. And so I just decided to take aim and like do something that I was scared of. That's wild. Was that hard? With. I mean, was it a, a very difficult choice to to leave school? I mean, going on this like starting down this very traditional path mm -hmm. um, into something unknown. Was it mm -hmm. was that a tough call? Or were you like, this is, it, this is what I need to do? It wasn't for me because um, I think I was in a time of my life where I wanted to rebel in little ways. Like, um, I didn't feel like I had to do things like a really specific way. And I think in the back of my mind, I was always like, I can go back to school. Right. Um, but I felt confident enough that um, 
you know, I'll always have something that I can do or some way to like excel. Yeah. I mean, I would just say that doesn't feel like a little way to rebel. Like I wore like <laughs> red skinny jeans. That felt like kind of rebelling in a little way. Um, <laughs> dropping out of school is like, that's a big one. So it didn't really you. feel like a drop, a school, high school. Uh, college dropout. It was like a um, pause. It felt like I'm making money doing something. I'm right. learning. So I'm going to do this until things change. There we go. Yeah. So moving into the world of Instagram, when did you, you started your Instagram about five years ago? Yeah. Um, and were you like very quickly, cool, I'm going to kind of take this moderately seriously and, and, and publish photos fairly often? Or mm -hmm. was it just uh, did it take a while to kind of get going for you? Um, so this is an interesting, I think I'm, I'm different than a lot of bloggers in this way to where I saw that I was following people. I think I saw the market and um, while maybe my original motivation was like, you know, I want to curate content, I want to take photos, I want to get free clothes. Like those are all the things about blogging that you look at immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew from the beginning, like, I want this to be a career. I want to be able to make money. I want to work with brands. Um, so from the beginning, I've always looked at it in a strategy way. Right. Like, I want, I want to create something beautiful, and I am passionate about it, but there's also this business side of me that has always been a part of who I am, and I knew that if I were going to do it, I wanted it to be a business. Well, cheers. I mean, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's, that's I'm nice. I'm really grateful. When I started, um, it took me an entire year to get 3,500 followers on Instagram, which okay. is crazy. Write that down, people. I get influencers <laughs> email me all the time being like, I watch your show. I'm six months in. I've got yeah. 5,000 followers. Should I just shut it down? Like, yeah. I'm so frustrated. I'm like, whoa, no. You guys, this takes like, a long I, time. You know, I get, I get people that email me and stuff, and it's like, I want, you know, it takes so much work. It takes time, and like, um, being patient and stuff. So it took me two years to get to 10K. Wow. And like, honestly, I think like at a year when I was at 3,500, I was like, you know, will I ever get to 10K? I don't know. Like, I hope so. Yeah. I think that would be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like for me in that, like in that place, I was like, that would, that was success to me yeah. to like get to 10K and like, feel like you know totally I mean there's I mean it still is a big deal but like, it is it, it is you know it, it's it's eclipsed obviously by mm -hmm. what, 401 now I think yep okay congratulations Just hit 400K. congratulations that's a big one thanks um so you know you said that you kind of always had a strategy with this mm -hmm. when you were starting out when you were at 3500 10k were you trying new things were you you know I took I was telling you that I, I went through years of your feed before you came over mm -hmm. and you can see it shift you can almost see you um be like oh i'm gonna try the like minimalist black mm -hmm. and white thing and mm -hmm. then it's like i'm gonna try the like one color mm -hmm. for a while thing mm -hmm. like you can see your feed change and you can almost see yeah. you trying new things is that is yeah. that me projecting or were you no. trying out new strategies all the time yeah i mean um which i think is okay i think it's okay for you to experiment and not um, let yourself be stuck in one place and say that you're one kind of person um, because naturally as bloggers we're we are um, we're not like a brand where we have to be some defined um, person or aesthetic like we you know I'm experiencing life every day and changing every day so it's okay that you know things ebb and flow but for me um, I didn't start this as a photographer. I know when I see things that I like, but um, really I, I felt like this pressure when I started blogging that I need to be, um, my entire feed needs to be uh, all matching and aesthetically pleasing and my grid needs to look like a lookbook of some kind. Um, and I think that you know, there's still people that kind of do Instagram that way mm -hmm. and like props to them because it is, you know, a daily struggle yeah. to get your feed to look perfect. Especially as um, you start traveling and stuff, like to mm -hmm. have that consistency is mm -hmm. crazy. And to always have, because, you know, being on the other side of the camera, I am somewhat dependent on the person that is helping me right. with my photos. Um, but I do edit everything on my own. So, uh, 
Let's see, when I, when I first started in the first few years, like my focus was to become a good photographer, to capture those like in-between moments of like, um, you know, coffee in the morning with your, everything's perfect, you know. Um, and I did Instagram that way for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of just like hit me, I want to say like maybe two years ago, um, when all of the, you know, Instagram was at this beautiful place where like there were so many different ways where you can, you could connect and grow and, you know, I think a lot of us know all those little tricks. There were like hashtags, explore page, comments, um, upping your engagement. Um, if you could get, you know, within a, a certain amount of likes, you'd pop in, you know, mm -hmm. even having like someone with a lot of followers liking your photo. I remember when uh, Jessica Alba liked one of my photos and suddenly it had like double the likes <laughs> any of my other photos had. And I was like, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's how place. Instagram used yeah, to work. Yeah. And it was beautiful, it was honestly. Chronological. I loved it. Was it was no chronological, <laughs> you know. It's just like, if you were, if you were starting out today, mm -hmm. Like, um, what would you do? I mean, a lot of people watching the show are, are you know, under 10,000 followers. Mm -hmm. or they're just starting out. Um, this world is a lot more difficult than it was yeah. when, when you started, probably. Yeah. Um, so what would you do today if you were starting? What, how, do, how would you think about it? Yeah. Um, I think it's harder and it's easier. Um, there's, like, two sides of it. Like, I told you guys, it, it took me two years to get to 10K. Um, it took me, like two and a half to three years before I ever had like a brand partnership of any kind. Um, but I do think like the complete story of it is that Instagram, while I went, I experienced this like amazing time of growth and, and stuff, Instagram has changed a lot. And like, I can tell you, you know, in the last month, maybe I've only gained like 8,000 followers, which, um, is just because of how the algorithm works now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Instagram is like, cons maybe they're consistently cleaning, um, but it is harder now. Like, it's not like you can use these same tools that I did during that period of time to grow. Um, but uh, at the same time, it's, I think um, taking photos in the way that's relatable will only help you. Um, at least for Instagram, I mean, I keep my website separate and um, I throw in a lot of like other photography in there because that's what the platform is meant for. So if you look at Instagram as a way to connect with people on in a real way, in real time, um, another great thing that the Facebook workshop they talked about is that the most important things um, to focus on, uh, she said, you know, if you look at your explore page, uh, the first thing you see is the live, and then you see stories, and then you see video, and then you see photos. Mm -hmm. She said, look at it in that way, like lives, stories, like videos within your feed, and then photos. So I think the, the best thing that you can do is kind of focus on how you can be incorporating video in real time into your feed, um, and taking photos from, you know, if you if you're able to get around it like use your iPhone for photos I think people really mm -hmm. appreciate feeling like you're a real person um, and I still do think it, it's really helpful to be um, on the app engaging with other people um, I know a lot of people use like pods for comments um, I don't know if that's helpful or not anymore but respond to your your followers um, like let, let, let that mean something to you because I think if you're not connecting with the people that are reaching out to you, then you'll just easily lose them. I mean, think about how many people are unfollowing you every day and how you can like maintain some of the, like I, I try to respond to almost every comment, if not like heart them. Um, I try to respond to all my DMs, um, comments on YouTube, comments on my blog, like people are following you because they want to connect to you. So I think that like connection is just like the over, -encom mm -hmm. over encompassing word is to just like find a way to connect through through something that's digital. So then two years ago, you mm -hmm. were saying that maybe you kind of started to change some behavior. Yeah. Um, 
So it was about two years ago that I started using Icono Square, and um, if you haven't heard of it, it's it's not. Uh, it was a game changer for me back then. I still use it to kind of like track my growth and posting times, but um, it would tell me like exactly what what time of day I was getting the highest average likes on my photos. Which, when things were chronological, that was like a huge deal. Um, and I also use it just to, you know, track what, you know, how many people are following and unfollowing me every day, which the reality is like, you know, I think that I lose like five to eight hundred followers a day, which is crazy, you right. know, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, really it's like as long as you're gaining that many, you know, you're right. still increasing. But I think it's, it's important to point out and it's, it's mm -hmm. just, again, I think the new, like Instagram is a different place now. Mm -hmm. like. Influencers who are growing are growing on top of yeah. a huge amount of followers that they're losing every mm -hmm. day. You mm -hmm. know, it's about if you're losing 500, mm -hmm. trying to gain 800 mm -hmm. a day, right? Yeah. Um, knowing that tomorrow mm -hmm. you're losing 500 more. Yeah, and you can't take it personally. Like, right. I, it doesn't bother me um, because uh, really, like, you know, when people follow you on a whim, they don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's trying to declutter their lives, declutter their feed. Um, so that's just the reality of it. But hopefully the photos that you're posting each day are helping you exceed the amount that you're losing. Right. So you're using Econa Square. You mm -hmm. see all this data. Yes. So um, I realized that uh, the photos that I was posting of myself were getting double, if not more than double likes than the photos, my in-between photos that were like curating my feed that I felt that I needed so badly. Um, so if you look at my Instagram now, you will see only photos that have me in them, which I think most people might off right off the bat think, you know, that's one, maybe that's an ugly feed, um, or two, that's very vain. Um, or boring or whatever. I mean, I've seen comments on some of my photos um, from random strangers saying, you know, like, why, why is anyone following this feed? It's just a girl doing nothing in a photo every single time. Um, and I wrote, like, I wrote this... First of all, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this guy back, actually. Um, and I told him... Uh, Something along the lines of, you know, I, I totally understand that this might not be interesting to you personally, um, but I'm really just trying to connect with my followers. And if you think about how Instagram works, um, you know, there's, there's so many users, there's so many beautiful photos. Like, you're never going to have the most beautiful photo, but what you can have with someone is a connection. And so, if someone is following you on Instagram, I really think that they're looking for some type of connection or inspiration, but what's going to keep them following you is feeling like they, they know you mm -hmm. or they're a part of what you're doing or um, can get involved in some way. So I just feel that the best way for me to share myself is to be out there in front of the photo and on top of it, it just ends up that it works way better than you know, me showing you what coffee I'm drinking, so. Right, and we'll, I want to talk about kind of just mm -hmm. what that change did for you. Yeah. Um, but it's really interesting, I think, because like, when you started doing that, people just weren't, really nobody was doing that. Um, it was all about the feed. It was all about a curated yeah. feed. It was all about, mm -hmm. you know. And at that time, Instagram was suggesting people. Right. The Instagram suggestion which um, they were only suggesting people that had this curated grid. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all about your in-between photos, your lights, your edits. Right. Um, which I think ultimately ended up hurting the people that got suggested because here they have this, like, influx of followers, yet their likes are so low, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I, I think when Instagram stopped doing that, it was probably a really good thing. Right. Even though, like, my goal... <laughs> the entire time was to get suggested. I never right. did. Um, but I'm grateful for it now. Yeah. You know. um, and, you know, I think we see it working really well with YouTubers, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think the other thing that's interesting is it's not just that it's a photo of you every day. But a lot of times it's, it's, it's like face. Exactly. Another thing that bloggers 
don't do is mm-hmm. look at the fucking camera. Most yeah. of them are looking to the side. Most of them are doing something to block <laughs> their face. But you're like, yeah. most of the time you're looking straight to camera. Yeah. And it's waist up a lot of times. So it's, yeah. it's, very, it's very close and it's really intimate in mm-hmm. the same way that a YouTube video of somebody looking straight at the camera mm-hmm. is intimate. And those YouTubers have crazy engagement mm-hmm. to your point because people feel yeah. like they know them. They feel connected to yes. them in a way that you don't when, mm-hmm. you know, a Blair Eady, who I love her feed, but... You know, mm-hmm. it, it's very much an inspirational, you know, yeah. kind of aspirational yeah. thing, and, mm-hmm. and less about, you know, what do you know much about her life? Probably not. You exactly. Know, other than the yeah. fact that she's got crazy style. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, and that was me just coming to terms with who I am as a person. Like, I'm not, um, I'm not the photographer. Like, I'm not, you know, the most elite fashionista out there. Like, I feel like I am. The day-to-day girl and um, I'm just out there you know trying to find the cutest clothes the cutest coffee shops and like I feel like the best way that I can share that is just by being relatable rather than trying to be trying to kind of look like you know I have it all figured out um, and so when I when I do take my fi- pictures like I think that um, you know looking at the camera trying to show you guys like um, that I want to be connected to you. And then also, you know, there's, you can take photos in a million different angles. And um, I know that my feed isn't the coolest and best photography. Um, And I'm not trying to get the coolest angle. I'm trying to get an angle that really shows um, the perspective of being in the moment with me. So, which typically is directly across from where I'm sitting or standing, so. And what was I going to say? I have something. Hold on. Uh. There are there are a lot of girls doing um, this at now, and there were when I started as well. I didn't I didn't really like start this in any way, but I do. I did notice when uh, with Icono Square you can track people and stuff. But I noticed that the people that were doing this type of photography, um, which is another question that I get a lot is um, I use my iPhone like 99% of the time on my Instagram um, because the photos are flatter. They feel like in the moment. Um, I didn't go out and shoot on this like, professional camera, put it on my computer, edit it, and then upload it to Instagram. It was just in the moment. And I feel that there were a lot of girls that have been doing this in the last couple of years and they're really the ones that have grown like yeah. the the fastest um, in the last couple of years. And then you, you know, how do you, I asked the question but I kind of know the answer, but um, do you then, because the photos are you, you know, and because, you know, you don't, you know, you don't take the, the photo of the sunset or you don't take those kind of normal blogger mm-hmm. photos that you get, do you, you, do you rely on captions more to kind of tell a little story of what you're doing? Hey guys, today I did this, this, or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, um, what, what are your, what's your kind of um, strategy on captions? Um, honestly, I think captions are almost become secondary. Like, I mean, I still try to share um, as much as I can personally in my captions, um, but it's so much easier to express what's going on in a photo that's in the moment in a location than if I was just putting up a photo of some palm trees. Right. I feel like that's way harder to caption. It's like, where am I pulling my, what right. am I trying to say to you with these palm trees? Because likely this photo was taken like a month ago right. and I'm just using it because I don't have anything else to put up right now. You know. Yeah, and I think you do a good job though of being like, kind of just very conversationally like, Mm-hmm. This is my day. This is what yeah. I'm doing. Like I, I took this photo at this coffee shop. I'm about to go do this thing. Mm-hmm. And you do feel like following you. I feel like I know a little bit about what you're doing. It's like taking someone along with you. Right. Um, them feeling connected, uh, which I am. I feel like this next few months, my biggest challenge, um, being in front of a video camera is very difficult for me. Like right now, this is, this is okay because we're talking about like numbers and like, I mean, maybe you see like the, the pre-med physics side of me right now where it's easy to talk about things that I know. Right. Um, but if, you know, I'm trying to do a vlog or something, like I just get really shy. Yeah. (laughs) So, but I'm, I'm going to try, uh, I'm trying to get into the video 
scene because really if it is all about connection, like what better way? What better way to share? I, I can only show so much in these photos that I'm taking right. each day. So that makes sense. Yeah. So we know what you did. So when you switched over from that, when you switched from, you know, mm -hmm. kind of those filler photos and things like that to mm -hmm. the photos of you with the iPhone, all that mm -hmm. kind of what what happened? Um, I started to see like, a, so let's see. So it's a couple years ago. So in the last year, we all know that like the algorithm changed for Instagram. It's been really difficult to grow in general. Um, but before this last year, I had like a solid year of, you know, trying to post these photos in cool locations because, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why any of us really thought that like a white wall with a shadow was more exciting than like going to, you know, a beach or on a street and like seeing someone in real life, you know. But I got away from the white walls um, and started taking photos on the street or with a view and started to see my likes just spike. Mm -hmm. Especially at that time when things were chronological and you could get to an explore page really easily, um, you w I would see an uh, exact like I would see like direct directly like a photo that would get twice the amount of likes because maybe it was at a peak time uh, during the chronological phase or maybe it was just like did really well for me as far as like it was a beautiful view in New York and it would get double the likes and I would wake up the next morning with like sometimes 1500 followers more which wow. is just crazy yeah right so I, I rode that wave for like a good year um, I think that I went from like 100k to 300k within a year wow so um, yeah right. and it, it was, was nice it was crazy <laughs> growth and you have insane engagement and you yeah. have for a while now, mm -hmm. um, you know, to the point where I've, I think I've told you this before, yeah. but I've been around other influencers and people are like, I think she buys her followers. Or I think she buys her likes and, you know, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> you have a fantastic follower health graph on, on four cards. Thank like, you. Verified I'm, authentic. Like I, I appreciate the four card verification. <laughs> I think it's cool that you. But I think, you know, the, the interesting thing was I think other people in the industry were looking mm -hmm. at it being like, how is they that were, possible? Yeah, they were struggling to grow. They were struggling yeah. to get engagement. And they were just like, but she's just posting an iPhone photo of herself. And you're like, that's yeah. the point. Yeah. Like, that is what's working. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I can't take the credit for this. Like, I had a few friends and we were all experiencing the same thing. Like, Brittany from Thrifts and Threads and a few other girls. And, you know, we would just talk about it and compare and, like, you know it was a good like year period where we were just learning from one another learning what worked and what didn't work we would like all have a bad night on the same night and just mm -hmm. like chalked it up to like the Instagram algorithm or we'd all have an amazing night one night I mean there gosh I think that it's coming up on a year I was in Paris for fashion week um, coming up almost a year ago since we're here during fashion month and me and three other girls, Brittany was one of them, we took a street style shot in Paris Fashion Week because we'd noticed that when we all post at the same time, tag right. one another, like and comment on one another's photos, something happened and yeah. like it, it was happening a lot like about a year ago. So uh, Brittany and I were staying in the same hotel at that time and we just realized like for some crazy reason I got like 9,000 followers in one week. Wow. And it was just off of, you know, I had one Eiffel Tower photo, which at the time, I think my likes were averaging around eight or 9,000. So this was about a year ago, maybe seven or 8,000. And for some reason, this one photo got 26,000 likes. Ooh. And I have no idea what <laughs> happened. Like, it was an Eiffel Tower. Right. And that was all I could chalk it up to, you know? Right. And, um, direct correlation like because that day somehow I got 2,500 followers so you knew that like something about this photo being really likable meant that I was getting a lot of followers right. so after like experiencing these things it just kind of clicked like 
you know, it doesn't help me to put up a photo that isn't going to do well. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to lose followers regardless every time I post. Right. But if I'm not posting a photo likable enough to get new followers, I'm hurting myself. That's great. You know? mean, yeah. That's, That's where great. the like quality over right. quantity. Yeah. And how often are you posting? So that's another really big topic because I do see girls that are still posting, you know, especially during fashion month, maybe like eight or nine times a day. Yeah. Which um, on top of that being, like a lot. on top of that being a lot of work, because things aren't chronological, you could be posting up. You could be, you could be um, showing up in people's feeds, maybe three or four photos in a row. Right. I've seen that where like, you know, anything within the last 48 hours is kind of up for grabs. Um, I, which I know because I, I went to a Facebook workshop where they explained like this new way uh, instead of chronological they call it a um, what were they calling it something like a hmm, I'm blanking on it uh, well anyway so the way that they do it they disperse photos over a 48 hour mm -hmm. period time period so you, the people following you um, if they're up on their feed and they're they're like actually looking at Instagram, uh, it could be up to 48 hours before they actually see your photo in their feed. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's really crazy. So um, there's a chance, like I'll see it all the time where girls, like maybe it's a photo they posted the day before, but they'll be like back to back on my feed. Right. Um, so imagine if you're posting nine times in right. 24 hours, like you're just overloading people and um, giving them that many opportunities to unfollow you. Yeah, I'm over this. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, in this Facebook workshop, they also said like you you don't need to post more than once a day um, because of the way that they're releasing these photos. Um, so on a on there's days you know I have brand partnerships and stuff, so I have to post more than once, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want it to just be you know ads in my feed. Um, and there's times where I just want to like. I, I do try to be in real time as much as possible because I think that when your stories correlate with your photos, like people are getting right. a real experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that, pro that like, there was influencers and I think stories is cut down on it that were like mm -hmm. a week behind sometimes. Yeah. You know, they were posting yeah. like, oh, like, you know, so nice waking up in New mm -hmm. York, but like you knew they were in Sydney. I'm mm -hmm. just like, hey, what is yeah. That's weird. And you know, like, we we get that maybe the consumer does understand like it's not all real time there's you know we have to pre-shoot in some areas but um i i think it, on the other end of it it just takes away from the experience of feeling like connected and like you're actually keeping up with someone's day mm -hmm. when they know that like you're regularly like not right. not in real time so it just feels more like in a magazine and like that's beautiful and great, but I think what, what thrives on Instagram is feeling like you're keeping up with someone. Mm -hmm. So, the connection. Okay. Um, so to answer your question, like once a day is great, twice a day is like the max. I will not post more than twice a day. That makes sense. And you still do the time of day thing or does it just not matter as much anymore? Um, it doesn't matter as much anymore, but I still do notice like um, if you don't have an icono square, I think it's still really helpful to get it. Um, I notice like peak times throughout the week and so I try to stick to them mm -hmm. um, but my biggest like the rule of thumb is that I try not to post uh, within 10 hours of another photo just okay. because I have noticed like the second that I post another photo this first previous photo just stops getting likes altogether yeah. so it's like it, it like cuts it out of the feed and then right. they have this new the new one that they're pushing. The new one just gets pushed. So, so another, again, if you're posting three or four photos in a day, yeah. you're kind of cutting yeah, you're the cutting, legs out of, of two or three of them. Yeah, at least. so your average likes are going to be like so much lower. But then if you were to let one go for a few days, you would see it just like, it just will keep going. This is great. I mean, you, I didn't, I mean, I knew that you geeked out about this stuff. Yeah. One, I don't think I knew what a nerd you were. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Um, I, went, I went to school for <laughs> physics. <laughs> but two, I mean, it's just, it's, it's interesting because it goes, it goes counter to a lot of advice that I've heard. It goes counter mm -hmm. to probably some advice that I've given. And I think it's a really mm -hmm. interesting case study um, at, in another way to do it, you know? And, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's fantastic. I might take a like, you know, <laughs> I might take the Michelle challenge and just post 
iPhone photos for a week. I'm interested to do see, it. you know, because like photos of you. Right. One I'll week. do maybe I'll do a week. The day this is published, mm -hmm. I'll do a week of photos of me. Yes. On the on iPhone. On the iPhone. We'll see what you're doing goes. that day. Okay. I'll take and the challenge. And see what happens. I'll take I the mean, challenge. I guarantee you that people that know you are going to feel like excited to see your photo, and they're gonna like it. Like. They will, they will definitely have more likes. Okay. I'll tell you that. All right. We'll, we're going to take the challenge. We'll see. <laughs> Thank right. you so much for joining. Yeah. Thanks for yes. coming to my house. Thank yeah. you guys for coming to my house. It's now time for you to leave. It's now uh -huh. time for all of us to leave. Oh, I have one more thing. She's got one more thing. Um, because I put, this in, I put this in a few of my blog posts where I talk about, I want to make more to help people understand things, but um, you can feel free to email me at hello at takeaim.nu and I do respond Tim to... Put that, Tim will put that up right here. <laughs> I do respond uh, to all my emails and if you have questions, I love to help. Okay. Email her, not yeah. me. Um, <laughs> I respond to about half of my emails, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's like my OCD side. I like have to respond to people unless it's a creepy, creepy DM. Right. I will not respond. Creepy dudes, stay away. Uh, email Aaron at Aaron is no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else? No. Do you have something else? Um, no. Okay. Thank you so much again. Yeah, if you don't follow her, you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> that's all, and, and we'll see you next week.